Hello folks and uh, welcome along once more to Gundog and Fly and uh, had a fantastic response to my two videos, the two part um, video series on fishing the mayfly here in Ireland and uh, it, the response was nothing short of phenomenal and um, as I promised in the last video in part two I said I would tie the mayfly, show you the tying of it and uh, that's what this video is all about. But just to briefly recap on uh, the mayfly fishing. It was after a long, we'll call it hiatus, the mayfly re suddenly reappeared again and um, we got some fishing. It was a very, very unusual way. It happened very unusually because I watched the mayfly on the local river here for at least uh, 40 years and um, it's waxed and waned at times, but it all but disappeared in the last few years. And this year there was somewhat of a resurgence, but it happened very unusually. It happened quite suddenly and also finished quite suddenly. Normally they would gradually build up and then taper off, but they just suddenly appeared and then suddenly disappeared. It was about maybe eight to ten days where the flies were around and then that was it. So now the mayfly season for this year is over. I'm hoping that again next year that we'll get something similar. Um, I wouldn't hold out any great hopes because the, like all flies, the mayfly has in decline and um, it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen one way or another but anyway we, we live in hope and um, in the meantime I'm going to tie this fly for you. This is the most successful mayfly that I have ever used. I kind of developed it over a period of years. There was all kinds of flies, the old green drakes and some of the older patterns and they'd work sometimes but they weren't consistent. And this fly here um, that I'm going to tie now is a fly that um, I kind of didn't deliberately design. It just evolved over a period of time. And it's a fly that works consistently, day after day and very predictably. And it's the only mayfly pattern I now use. So here it is. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're a fly tyer, it's a very simple fly to tie. It's not difficult, in, uh, there's no difficulty involved if, if, even if you only fly time a short time, it should be no real problem for you. So, um, here goes. Oh, it actually is a very, very simple fly to tie. And uh, this is a size 10 hook. Um, strongest hook you can get, but as light as possible. Because sometimes you will catch big fish on mayflies, fish that you might not ordinarily catch on other flies. Thread I'm using here is Uni Thread Olive in 80. So we start off just put down touching turns of thread back along roughly halfway and then come back up to roughly third of the way that way on the hook shank. Now, the next material, CDC, called the Canard in French, it's duck's arse basically, it's the preened land feathers from a duck, and we're going to use a bunch of these to create the mayfly wing. Now, I have a bunch of them here, but a lot of the big ones are gone, because I've had to tie a lot of mayflies to meet with demand, there's two. Try and get some of the bigger ones. This may take a little bit of time, but try and find a few bigger ones. They're nearly all gone. Um, CDC is available from most fly shops or fishing tackle shops. Um, I'm a hunter as well, so I shoot ducks in the throughout the season, and I collect the pring gland feathers from them. And generally, I have more than enough, but this year, because of the mayfly, I've used up, like I say, most of the bigger ones. So I'm scraping through here and trying to find a few. Generally, you're going to need four or five good big feathers. So now, here we are, I think I have four or five there. And I'm just going to create a little bunch just like that. That essentially is the wing of the mayfly. So I put it on here, turn the thread over to a uh, second turn, uh, pull it to the length, 
and then tie down. Now, each turn of tread I'm making now is moving this direction. off this waist. It's not entirely waste because I use these, I put these in with my coffee grinder and I mix them, mix this with other materials to make dry fly uh, dubbing. So I save those. So now there's our wing. I'm going to come back up, lift the wing vertical and tie in front. That will force it to stand vertically like that. Now I'm coming back down again and for a tail we use pheasant tail. Three or four fibers like that. Now you leave them just slightly longer than the body. And that creates your tail just like that. Very simple. Now, next thing is the body color. Now, the body color I use is what I kind of uh, call sort of apple green. Now, this is a mixture of a few different fibers and the CDC, as I explained earlier. I use um, a coffee grinder. Uh, I'll plug it out here and then I'll show it to you. This is a coffee grinder which you can buy from any DIY store or that sort of thing and here we are that's all the trimmings from the CDC that I put into the coffee grinder and then I add in various different materials until and then I spin them in the coffee grinder until I get this nice sort of apple olive green color and um, any olive color will do you really but I just like this color it's just it looks really well so I'm going to use this to dub the body and you needn't be too particular here if you're tying very small flies you need to be very particular with the dubbing but with a bigger fly like this you can put it on quite heavily and everything will be okay so if you noticed I put it on in a taper it's tapered it's thinner here and then it gradually gets thicker as we go forward and that will create the tapered shape of the body. So wind it on. The fact that there's CDC in it, in the body material as well gives the fly extra floatability. Now right here in front and we're not ready entirely to finish off the body but the next thing is a hackle. Now I'm using this, it's a sort of a dun colour hackle. It doesn't necessarily have to be this, it's the overall shape of the fly that makes it so effective. The colours are to a degree incidental, but um, I'm using this dun. An olive will do fine, anything that's sort of drab and fits with the sort of general um, shape and overall colour of the fly, which is a sort of a olive to yellow for the most part. So there's our hackle, cut it here, pull the wing just out of the way, tie the hackle in like that. Now I'll just put another small bit of dubbing on here in front. Next, we're just going to wind on a couple of turns behind the wing and then close touching turns of the hackle moving this direction, moving forward towards the eye. And when we reach the eye, we trap the hackle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through the hackle like that. I should reinforce it and then back to the eye again. Pull everything out of the way. With your fingers. And then whip finish. Now 
So I've used this fly on both lakes and rivers. I principally fish it on my local river here where I have great success with it. But I've also fished it on lakes where it's been very successful. Now, the next thing is to trim off all the hackle underneath. If you leave the hackle on full, what it tends to do, it tends to make the fly helicopter in the air, which will spin your leader and make it and make a mess of it basically. So by trimming off the underside of the hackle, you get the proper overall shape and it's just unbelievably effective fly. So that's it, very simple. Anyone who ties flies will be easily able to manage this. Um, I've tied <laughs> during the Mayfly period there every evening I was tying them. You know, I had such a, a demand for them. But in any case, that's the fly. Try this the next time you're going fishing Mayflies and you will find that it's really, really effective. So that's it folks, that's my killer mayfly, I like to call it my killer mayfly, it certainly has accounted for a lot of fish um, over the years and uh, make sure you have a few of these in your box if you're fishing mayfly either on lakes or on rivers. So thanks again for joining me, hope you enjoyed watching the video, be sure to subscribe, I'll be making plenty of more videos in the future hopefully and good day, 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 good